it's like summer camp that we just never stop going to. So, um, I, you know, a lot of these people, I only see them one week a year, uh, but, but I've been seeing them at this point for 30 some years and it's just a lot of fun, learn a lot, and just get to hang out for a week. Crash got his nickname by the enthusiastic method with which he learned to ride a unicycle. <laughs> and like all good nicknames, he didn't like it at first, but it stuck. There's a lot to see at the International Juggling Association 75th convention in Cedar Rapids this year. And it's more than just juggling. I learned this trick, now it's pretty simple, from professional juggler Ava Malloy. Okay. Ooh. Oh. I would say most of my interactions with jugglers over the years are people who just like learning. Whether that's learning something about juggling or just learning something in general. I would say that people who have an innate curiosity to learning sometimes really strange skills uh, generally end up in the juggling community. So you see a lot of overlap with things like people who really like Rubik's Cubes but solving them faster or solving bigger and bigger, more complicated Rubik's Cubes, or doing puzzles, or picking locks. So things like that, which are kind of odd, yet interesting skills, uh, that might not even be seen as skills by people. Like, it's that, like, this clearly is a skill, but I've never even thought about it. Those tend to be the things that make a juggler. And that type of curiosity to me is what I see permeates through the whole community. That curiosity was clear as I heard dozens of people's stories about how they started juggling. I started juggling um, last year when my, gym, my, when my gym teacher tried to teach us over Zoom, but I was having trouble and I was embarrassed because I thought I looked really bad, so I decided to try to learn it in my free time and I really enjoyed it. Uh, when I was uh, nine years old, my mom brought me to a place called Never Thriving, which is a juggling club based in Minneapolis. And uh, I met a guy named Biz. And I thought, saw him doing uh, Diabolo, which is giant yo-yo with uh, two sticks. And you whip them together and you can do tricks, tricks with the sticks and the string and the yo-yo. And I thought, that is the coolest thing ever. And I begged my mom when I was nine years old for one, and she told me, you have to learn to juggle first. And I spent the rest of the week learning to juggle. I was at work, and a, one day a fellow said, hey, let's learn how to juggle. And I said, <laughs> juggle? What the heck would I want to learn how to juggle for? And he said, it'd be great. We could go to a party. I was a more fun person at that time in my life. And he said, let's, we could go to a party pick up three apples and juggle them. And we went next door and bought three Super Balls each, about this big. We would probably have been better off to learn with hand grenades than those ridiculous Super little Super Balls. Yeah, I started in uh, 1977. The, I, from in Buffalo, there was a blizzard. It's famous, the blizzard of 77. And you couldn't drive, the car was stranded. No one could go out of their house or do anything for two weeks. And I. So I was watching The Tonight Show and John Denver juggled on it. So I said, you know, that's something I can do. So then I started juggling. It just started with balls and basic things, but it's kind of branched out into a lot of weird stuff. <laughs>
spinning mannequin heads and you know that sort of thing. <laughs> Unusual stuff. One thing um, about juggling is it really is a positive addiction. Yeah. Um, when you we look around this gym and so we've been doing this for 40 years a goodly number of these people we've known for yeah. nearly 40 years. And you see them one week a year too yeah, usually that's been at this great, convention. Great fun. So some of the things that we were doing um, are what were referred to as gentleman juggler routines. They go back to the what, 1920s and, er, and earlier, and they were things that you would, that the gentleman jugglers would perform with, things you would find around the house. Um, so there'd be bottles, cups, bowls, things like that. They would do a lot of tricks with that. So a lot of some of the tricks that I was doing are based on that premise. Uh, so one of the things I did was flip a bottle onto a stick that I was holding in my mouth. That, that goes way back to you know the 1910s, 20s or so. Those were more common tricks in those days. A lot of times magic and juggling do get confused as being kind of the same idea. That they're both really hard for people to understand outside of the community, outside of the skill set if you have not had access to it. So then they get grouped together because they're a little bit difficult to grasp in some of the same ways as well, even though they are very, very diff different uh, skills. You could see magic as taking something effortless and making it look extremely difficult and you could take juggling as something extremely difficult and making it look effortless. I came to IJA as a tourist more than anything else. I don't hold any of the skills, I don't have any knowledge of the skilled toys, but what I walked away from the festival with is that yes, there's world-class professional jugglers there, they're serious hobbyists who have been doing it for 20 years, but there's also people who have been practicing their skill toys for a year and they're there to learn. And Sam Malcolm was right. The juggling community loves to learn, but they also love to teach and share. The first thing you have to learn when you start juggling is to stop fearing failure, which is something that everybody is afraid of. And so you, you do these little mistakes, you drop, you pick it up, and that feels good because you're going on. You get this one trick. You get this one trick and then that, you have that achievement. It both brings me joy to see myself accomplish things and uh, to see others accomplish things. Like juggling is just this big giant puzzle that no one has like a default understanding of how it works. But once you do or once people like you know or people you meet um, figure out some pieces of the puzzle, it's so satisfying in both parts. Uh, there's, there's so much that excites me about juggling. No matter how much I learn, there's always something more that I can learn. I can always take my practice further with it. They're Cholita juggling hats, and they're bowler type hats made uh, from pure wool, and they're designed to be pr weighted for a bunch of different tricks. And be thrown in the air and catching them with all the different weight that you need to do juggling tricks. Because if your hat is too light, you can't do proper throws. If your hat is too heavy, you can't uh, do finger spins. And if your hat isn't shaped properly, you can't, you know, do body rolls. And so it's it's a big importance to have a properly weighted hat. There are legends of people learning to juggle at three years old, and I have personally taught an individual who is uh, above 75 years old. Um, I guess the youngest person I've taught was six years old, and there really is no limit. As long as you can catch a ball, you can learn to juggle.